and share my screen. Welcome everyone. This is Doc's Office Hours. It's the 10th of August. And let's look at what we've got as proposed items on the agenda. Let's see. So I think I may want to add one item, Jonathan. If we get through the topics that you had, we should talk about, whoops. Oh, that's silly. Why won't this thing format correctly? There we go. Uh, let's see. Windows upgrade guide for Jenkins 2.235.4. And we can just discuss it briefly. Okay. So here are the topics that I see. Welcome, Vlad. Great, great to have you here as well. Thank you. So we've got Jonathan has done some really excellent work on looking at the wiki migration sheet and has turned it into something much, much more useful, much more interesting. Uh, so that's the lead topic. And then I put Windows Upgrade Guide for Jenkins 2.235.4 as a second topic. Any other topics anyone wants to add to the agenda? This looks fun. Okay, then let's start with the wiki migration sheet. Jonathan, do you want to take us through a review of the data and I'll, I'll navigate or what would you, how would you like to approach it? Well, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the topics first. Uh, there is some, uh, all data it's from the wiki migration sheet. So it's no secrets for anyone. But uh, I believe uh, now you can see a graphic visualization. We have understand uh, more about uh, our work we need to do. So, for example, I discover uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, pages already migration, migration, but uh, some of the redirect links uh, isn't work. Maybe because uh, the redirect instructions were 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 override for another co commit for example I, I don't know why so we need to investigate uh, why the redirects the, it doesn't work do you have an idea about I, the issue i do and it's it's at least one of the issues is due to a mistake i made in creating these links so let's let's take one that has an example. Yeah, for example. Uh, let's choose. Let's see. I should be able to find one that. Oh, okay. You Here, can let's use do this the filter in the installing top. Jenkins on Ubuntu. This one. Yeah. Right. So when I click this, we're going to. It's going to take us into the wiki, but it's going to add an extra slash character into the URL. And that was my mistake when I initially created the link. Notice this extra slash character up here at the top. So yeah. instead of being Jenkins slash, it's Jenkins slash slash, which is still a valid URL, but it bypasses the redirect. Oh. So what we need to do is we need in this, in this sheet, we need to, and I don't know, is it possible to do a global search and replace where we turn every occurrence of Jenkins slash slash into Jenkins slash? Mm, okay, but- Are you positive uh, you wanna do that? Are you positive that nobody had any of them set not to redirect? Well, well so go ahead. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, I can, Meg, I can answer your question. Yes, I'm confident that this was an unintentional thing. and any case of Jenkins double slash should be Jenkins single slash. So I'm confident the replacement is valid. Cool. But Jonathan, to your question, what was your question, Jonathan? Well, it, it's because, uh, so maybe the issue uh, uh, was uh, right to read double slash too. It, it also was, was yes, also. And, that, and so the GitHub issue was also mm. wrong I made the mistake. I, I was consistent in making the mistake. 
<laughs> yeah, you're really good. Don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's what happens when I, when, well I use done. <laughs> when I use programs to create bug reports, it's disastrous, yeah. right? And that's why I didn't create copy paste is amazing. of them. But yes, I was using a program and the program helped me do the same thing over and over again in exactly the wrong way. But I would yeah, add, okay. uh, Mark, that consistency is a very positive thing, at least something yeah. positive here. That's yeah. the way. That's the way. You have great potential, Vlad. That, that's good. <laughs> we could, it, it's really dark, but at least it's dark everywhere. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> okay, so about the redirections, we have no issue about just well, the no, typing. No, actually, some of them still are not redirecting correctly because even with this change, I found at least one case where the redirect was still not being applied. So, so yeah, it's, I believe you. The, your, your done needs redirect comment is still valid in many, many cases. And we have to visit it and see, okay, is this one of those cases or not? So, okay, in about the double slashes, uh, you want to put uh, another rule in the VROSIS or just omit it from the from the weak migration sheet? What yeah, actions we, we do you prefer? We, do you we prefer? definitely do not want another rule in the vhost configuration file because real human beings don't make that double slash mistake. So so I okay. don't want to ex that, Making that if you've looked at that vhost conf file, it's enormous. And I don't want to make it double yeah. length because I made a typing mistake in creating bug reports. Nice. Okay. So uh, in this week, I will uh, check a link by link, looking for double slashes and uh, what uh, it's really not redirects. I have no re redirection. So we can map in all the work to do. That's, that's correct. Okay. The double slashes do not have a redirect. And in fact, there is now a safety check inside the Jenkins file for the vhost.conf repository, which checks that double slashes do not exist for this case, because we had, we had it, it, it's my mistake went even further. A few of the redirects were defined initially with double slashes. <laughs> so they were failing to redirect because they did exactly what I said to do instead of doing what I meant to do. So any okay. objections if I attempt to do this replace? No, it's okay. Okay, so values on all sheets, yes, okay. Uh, it's okay because I will use the status column to look in for the not redirect ones. Great, okay, so done. Now let's test it just to be sure that it actually did something. This should go to the wiki and then, so apparently the global replace thing that I tried didn't actually do a global replace. So we'll have to find another way to do it in inside the URLs because what we're trying to do is do an edit of a URL, not edit of text. Yeah, and it, maybe it's because we use a, a hyperlink uh, formula to create the hyperlink. But there is no problem. I can uh, uh, fix this using another formula. Okay, super. It's, I, I know I can do the edits interactively and they then work, but yeah, I don't want to do the edits interactively if I can possibly avoid it. So, so that addressed the, the embarrassing one. Now the, the, the recent change, so we just had, uh, just within the last week or two, we had reverse proxy mod brought in this one, Jenkins X behind an Nginx reverse proxy. And I know that the change was submitted because I submitted it. I was one of the reviewers and it's yeah. been merged and yet when i take away that extra slash this will not redirect so but it should so there's something still amiss and this one needs needs more investigation okay 
So I'm just going to put a note here. Uh, Jenkins slash slash. Jenkins slash is many of the issues. And then the proxy, reverse proxy. Uh, recent redirect is does not seem to be having effect happening. Yet I know that it was merged. And I'm gonna put the URL there just to have it. Okay. Okay. Well, the next one is about the abandoned uh, uh, issues. Uh, so, uh, in the moment uh, we have, uh, at the moment we have uh, uh, 12 uh, issues waiting for PR reviews. Okay, but uh, some of some of them uh, already go, was reviewed by someone that uh, asking for some uh, adjustment, some. Uh, mistyping or things like that but the sender uh, just uh, abandoned the issue or didn't see they it required some action so maybe one of you with permission can interview and uh, approval the pr so and is, this is one where did you did are these were cases where you detected that they had made the changes but or they were there are still changes that need to be made or both uh, both uh, because uh, the review uh, asking for uh, changes but the sender uh, didn't see abandoned or any case uh, so the, uh, we are in the data log we, we can move forward because we are we we need to interview from the inside the, the APR approval the changes or make the changes the review itself itself so we can help us with these issues or, I, or I what is the process i believe so i think any any person any person can propose changes to a pr but i think only reviewers uh reviewers can apply those changes yeah we need to take some actions we need to choose what to take okay now is there did, did, you, you did you find a query in github that helps us identify these or do you just worked through them there are only about 30 total open prs so well, I, I, I visit uh, issue by issue. So if the, the, you go to weak sheet, uh, we can use the filter to identify them, for okay. example. All right, well, let's look then. Let's go there go and let's to, look at Jenkins. It's the second tab, your second tab. Uh, oh, oh yeah. you say here we've got them. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I put a, a filter there so you can Clear and just clear and a PR review, just a PR, a PR review. review. Ah, good. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Click Perfect. Okay. All right. So I can use this to drive, do a quick, quick sweep through things exactly. that we could open them up. Excellent. All right. Great. Exactly. Uh, uh, so for example, uh, let's see the issue. This. 17 line, 70 line. Just line look at 70, 70 line. here, okay. Yeah, you saw it, I put in the comment that the, the PR was approved, but was abandoned. Yeah, and this Just, one, this one is, is a, the, the glossary is a place that we, we have to be very careful about um, allowing changes. So yeah, this one, we can bring it back. I'm confident we can, we can, Re, re raise this one back for discussion. Let me do a quick look to see what the content so is. So it's the PR 3362. 
Uh, there is a, a comment from Megato. Okay, so 3362. Good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Just to visit the PR, we see all like a request changes, but uh, wasn't done. The last oh, comment. Right. And it now has conflicts. And, and this is one of those where yeah, so this is this is highlighting the changes to terminology can be quite sweeping. And right now the governance board will meet this Wednesday or this Thursday to review discussions about terminology. So this file is going to be touched in in context of terminology. So this one is likely going to hold while we while we work through the terminology discussions. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's because I have no comment uh, uh, alert us about the topic, so maybe it's important to register and, uh, by comment to everyone knows about. It. Well, and and it should it should have had, yeah. There's already a PR, and here's the link to the preceding PR, and yeah. So terminology. Technology discussions are in progress with the governance board and will result in other changes in this file. Okay. And then the conf, yeah, so, all right. Uh, we can actually, I mean, if we want, we could go through each of these and identify which could be quickly, which which could be unblocked, uh, if you'd like, or we can go back to the agenda. What's your preference, Jonathan? Well, I, I prefer back to agenda because we okay. have no so, so much time to the meeting, so maybe it's a homework to do after. Okay, good. Mark Homeworth quote. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Next. No. Oh, okay. And then the next topic is about uh, uh, PRs that uh, were approved, uh, measured, but issue was not automatically closed. So we need to help to close it. Uh, there is a filter to them too. And so you, you can see on the sheet. Just apply the filter, the weak sheet. Done, but not closed. Yeah, over there. Yep. Okay, so we've got just one there. And okay, so this one has been closed. Yeah, the measured. Yeah, you measured the the TR, the close of the TR, but uh, the issue it's open yet. Okay. All right. So then, and do you know if this one has been redirected yet? I I, I really don't remember. Okay. Let's check. No, wasn't. Okay. Needs a redirect. But there is double slash. Yeah. No, needs the redirect too. Yeah, so let's fix this. Needs a redirect. Redirect instructions. And I'll need to find, so this is another homework item for me. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Next topic. And the next topic and uh, register issues. Okay. Uh, in the yellow, uh, uh, if you see the, the graphic, the chart, uh, the yellow ones is uh, pages waiting issues. So I oh, opened well, someone, I opened 10 and the I, I, I think you, 
didn't didn't we need to talk about this one first awaiting pr review oh i've already uh, talking about this it's uh, just for someone uh, we have 12 waiting for pr review so I don't know how yeah, are the time is the, uh, the reviews okay. to all right. The so job, just a, this is just a matter of someone needs to review them. Okay, got it. Yeah, just about. Okay, uh, it's good to know how, how page are wait, waiting for reviews. It's okay. just a, like a control. Uh, the yellow ones it's about uh, uh, pages waiting for issues. So can I open all issues? Uh, I already opened some ones. There's some problems. Open open a, a lot of issues at once at a time or not? Well, what the problem prefer? the problem we we prefer not to just open issues because when when we open an issue, the issue it's not enough to actually open the issue. What we need to do in stating in the issue is here is the page that needs to be to converted. Here is the destination where the conversion should go, and here is the content which which needs to be discarded during the conversion process or completely reworked. So, so automated creation of the issue is is not is not a significant help compared to a full triage of the issue, a full review of the issue, where then someone can pick up the issue and know where to put it and which things to discard. So the, the new issues you created are, they follow the same pattern that, that my issues had, which was not telling people where to put things. And the problem with not telling them where to put them is they can't pick up, they cannot retrieve the issue and work on it because they don't know where the content goes. So- uh, Yeah, but uh, about this, strat this strategy, we, uh, we, Aren't and tell the people that we need help with that migration. So may I believe if we have the issue, I can alert that I'm work on it. So we we start doing the triage. That for that reason, I link your Hackfest video tutorial about the migration, and there uh, inside the video we explain how uh, we need to work. Uh, about the plain immigration, how need help, how asking for uh, the destinations of the new page. So, right. Yeah, so, so what you're right. saying is like this. However, what we're yeah. missing here is is where should the post initialization script be placed? This talks about okay, how do we do how do we do a migration? What it doesn't tell them is where in the destination should this thing be placed and what content from it is useful and what is not. Okay, so if I visit it one by one and create a plan for migration and update the issue so we can register of them, so can we register? So, so your question was if if you visit each of the newly created issues and add yeah. to it, this belongs here, would that, yeah. would that be enough? That, that would make them much more useful. So that, are you comfortable that you are confident you know where to put those kind of things? So this one, for instance, launching agent jar from the console Well, I just uh, add a proposal to a destination. So I will uh, show to you, for example, uh, I guess this page about this list.jar from console uh, needs to re be redirected to that link, that, that new uh, endpoint. So if you approve, we register the issue. Yeah, so so this or not this, uh, this not specific strategy. Yeah, this specific example is a really good one to highlight. Okay, we've got a page that has no useful content, right? It's just a link to another page. So yeah, this page it's amazing. <laughs> is is just a redirect, right? And 
it redirect. It's a wiki level redirect, and and it wiki level redirects to this page. And this page, I suspect we can find this content already existing on Jenkins.io, and just the the action for these two pages should be just do a redirect to the one page that talks about how you launch a how you launch a an agent from a console window. Okay. Okay. So the but but the the analytical work the let's see agents the the analysis to decide how to do how to how to find those is very labor intensive right it takes it takes you or me or somebody reading through those and finding okay where is it that we're teaching people how to use agents meg do you remember how we use let's see, using agents i i with... think the pr for these pages isn't approved yet it's uh, waiting for a PR approval. Ah, ah okay, uh, got it. So we've, we've got it. a page pending, but it's not it's not been merged yet. Yeah, not yet. But okay. it's pending for a review. Excellent. Okay. So, well, uh, so it's answered. Uh, I get it. Uh, the problem is if we can't uh, register every issue, we we have no idea about the work we need to do but it's okay we we're following the with the sheet with so the sheet yes sheet. for me i'm less worried about having an issue for every everything we need to do than i am about mm -hmm. having cluttering things with incomplete issues that don't don't let someone start working on it with right away when they pick it up when they when they begin their work with it okay i get it yes that was good okay hmm. but i'm i'm open i'm open to other guidance in this case oleg and i intentionally decided together Hey, we don't want to create issues that a writer can't start with and know where to where to put the content. But it it means a human being has to do the analysis that we just just discussed. Okay. 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 So there is another topic, I guess. Maybe. Oh, well, we are already uh, talking about the redirect strategy. Oh, right. Well, and let's, let's go further on that, right? So we, we, we're still using, we'll continue using vhost.conf redirects. But now you've identified in the tables, things that still need redirects, right? We've got done needs redirect and these oops yeah these the the work is done but the redirect's not functional correct that's correct maybe because uh, the double slash and maybe because it uh, needs redirect in fact yeah good good check okay so there's exactly the starvation Okay, so that one definitely needs the redirect. It, it really okay. doesn't have it. So, so that's really good because um, it's, we need, now how do we track or is it worth, you've, is the sheet enough to track it? We don't even need a separate issue. Let's just use the sheet. You've done the work here, Jonathan, right? To tell us yeah. this needs a redirect. Some issues, are, yeah. But uh, uh, we need uh, we have the issue uh, link, but uh, some of them I I can't find find the destination page. So for example, the executor starvation, I don't know the destiny. Oh oh, now that's interesting. So we closed closed the issue. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Okay, so it says. 3384 resolves the issue. 
So maybe we need to vis visit the PR, check the destiny, and then create the reject. Yes, right. I think that's so. In this case, the redirect will be to executor starvation will be the redirect, and it would need to. So let's actually okay. Once again, it would have been better if I had it's, uh, in it's the issue. Using. Yeah, you're that's correct. Now let's see if Google finds that for us. Executor starvation. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Nope. So it's so Google search isn't even isn't even listing it in top results. Okay. Action. Use the sheet to submit uh, redirects PRs for pages. Is that a reasonable action, Jonathan? Yes, okay, I agree. Okay. And that one is not contingent on me. Anyone could do that, right? I can do it. I, I find the, the link. Okay, great. All right. Jonathan, this is absolutely wonderful work you've done with the sheet. Anything else oh, on, on the topic? No, just a question. Uh, do you have idea uh, all pages in the sheet uh, is it our, uh, our work we need to do about immigration? Or that he, there is another page from week to migrate to, because oh. that link wa was uh, sorted by visit. Okay, uh, there is another one. So if you, we migrate all of the lines, we finish the migration work. Good, good question. So the uh, the sheet is assembled from ninety days of access data uh, sampled several months ago um, current access data uh, may show more pages to actually not may, will show more pages to consider. And let me get a link okay. to the current access data because that way it's embedded in this file. Let's see, and that is here. Wiki top URLs. Here we go, this one. Okay, so this is a summary of page access counts for the last 24 hours extracted from the Apache log files. Mm. And so this, and what I do is I have a, a script that runs every day and grabs this and keeps it locally on one of my computers. And so I just gathered at that time, 90, 90 days worth of these things and use it to assemble that that report so but the, this link is, uh, is showing the last 24 hours or Correct. what's the period last 24 well what it shows is the shows yesterday's yesterday so how can uh, we have the last three months visit uh, I could share the data with you wherever you'd like. Oh. I, I just, I have it copied on my hard drive. Let's let me confirm that it's still there. Um, but but uh, the, the last uh, nine days from now, you, you have the... the uh, actually, the no, I have, I have much more than the last 90 days now because now I've, I've never deleted any of it. And therefore, 
I now have 180 days of data that I can, hmm. I can certainly share with anyone who would like to do any analysis of that. We just didn't want to keep okay. this kind of data on that server. So I just use a little bit of disk space on my computer. No, I, I guess. Well, it, it's because I, I guess it's important to know what, how big is the work we need to do. So we, if we, we can map in the, all the work, maybe you can plan and know how days we need to put on the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, I think, well, I'm, I'm less concerned about estimating the work and more concerned about being sure that any information that people find useful, we have, we have visited. Let's mm -hmm. see, just a minute. Let me look at this program just to see what it does. So, oh yeah, okay. So this, this little bit of Python just uh, collects all the files. counts them. So here the top most accessed page is my reverse proxy setup is broken. And then counts go down from there and it goes down to this one. And how many lines does that have? It has 380 lines currently of pages that were accessed sometime during the last 180 days. Okay. Can you now, export to us? Sure. It, is it? sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, and let's see if I take out, we take out plugins because plugin conversion is a separate process. Still 230. <laughs> oh, whoops. We should use it case insensitive 220 yeah so okay. how would it be helpful for you if i output if i export this cvs or uh, or just a uh, text file or we can convert after during the week well or do you, would it be okay if I just gave you the raw data and the script that I run and you okay. can then modify the script no as you wish? Because I don't know. They're, they're all data, it's enough. Yeah, it's only, it's only one and a half megabytes of data, so it's not actually that much data. It's each they're each, all data, each okay. data file is only five kilobytes. And so, so they're, not, they're not that large. Uh, how about if I will just put because there's nothing confidential here. So I'm just going to put, is, is tar acceptable? Or are you going to analyze this on a Windows computer? It's okay, you're on tar, I can start. Okay, so let me, I'm just going to create, uh, let's see, so let's but, call. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, we don't need to send me file by file. Maybe that uh, expression, just the icon in the text file. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be lazy and I'm going to put I'm going to put everything into the tar file. And then I'm going to put it on a little web server that I run. So, and I will embed the link to that. Um, oops. Data on Mark's HTTP server. Now, if I click that and this, it should download it. It did. Okay, it's 
only 110 kilobytes. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else on the wiki, wiki migration? Will you shoot me if I go off on a quick tangent? Oh, go ahead, Meg. Well, while you guys were talking this other stuff, I Googled launch agent from console. Um, the top two hits are from CloudBees support. <laughs> um, and you go on down to wiki. Um, I haven't reviewed the material carefully, but my spidey sense tells me that we've got a problem in the doc there. Spider sense. That... <laughs> That, that just doesn't sound, and it, well, it looks like there's a wrinkle that it doesn't show up unless you've enabled the, um, what used to be the JNLP block, or. Well, so, and, and that specific page you were referencing, Jonathan has a pull request to significantly improve the agent <gasps> documentation on Jenkins.io. Oh, okay. Jonathan's cool. pull request is blocked by the absence of time from a reviewer, i.e. me or Oleg or others. So, so we just need to get on, get, get the job done. And okay, review I'm what he's I, was looking at, I was looking at another one where you were going to delete two lines and just refer them to the regular Jenkins doc on how to launch. Ah, uh, yeah, right. And, and that I'm was saying that that might not exist or there might not be anything that it's that good, but that's why right. we've got the and, wiki and Jonathan's. Jonathan okay, gonna... Jonathan's actually created real documentation for us on on agents and and I think you used another page as the basis for that right Jonathan it was there were two or three or four pages related to agent up to using agents with Jenkins yeah I update the content uh, with uh, another uh, outside the Jenkins information so I, I create new samples and uh, I, I, I put there step by step how to start the agent okay. with using the pipeline. You yes, there is a lot of good content there. Up, except to say Thanks. that my Google search just confirmed that what you did needed to be done. So, right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Anything else on the wiki transformation? No, I guess not for now. Thank you. All right, excellent. Thank you, thank you. This is wonderful progress, Jonathan. Thank you very much. I just so, wanted to, to ask, uh, Jonathan, are you covering both inbound and outbound agents, or just uh, uh, just some 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 agents, some part of, part of agents? No, I just uh, I put there uh, a simple how to use agents to uh, and. Uh, help the main Jenkins installations work to execute the pipeline. Mm -hmm. But there is not a so a specific to mm -hmm. a task or another kind. Mm -hmm. Just so, uh, how to use a simple agent. I see. So you are not like doing any uh, 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 details about communication between master or whatever it will be called and the agent. No, as no, as just as a as agent as to use a at at S HH connection. Oh, so you're only talking about SSH agents, I see. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's this, that issue, the mm -hmm. second one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess it is one of many agents which can be enabled by Jenkins. <laughs> yeah, right. there is a lot of samples, but it's impossible to cover all of it. Right. Well, and once, well, Thank you very much for doing that much already. I had a, an ongoing discussion with a user, this one right here, where zocker 1999 net provided a brilliant bug report on, hey, I don't understand how to use a Docker agent. And ultimately, the user said, look, I'm going to go back to using GitLab CI because I know how to do this. And, and it's, mm. it's, it's good data from this user to help us understand <laughs> how crucial it is that, they, that we describe agent use well. So, so your work on agents is a good step towards us eventually resolving this kind of problem for brand new users. Well, I, I'm not a user Docker uh, samples yet because I, I guess Vlad is the Docker specialist to do it. 
So <laughs> I work on the basics and Vlad is the Vops guy. <laughs> And, and I think that's, that's, we already need basics, right? We know we, SSH agents aren't documented well enough. And, and there's lots to do just there. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, a, I've dreamed of some magnum opus that is everything you need to know about agents because there's all this, I find no place do I find guidelines on how to choose whether you want a static agent or an ephemeral agent or, you know, why would I use Docker versus not use Docker? And I think the big reason for not using Docker is I don't understand Docker, but, um, but I'm not sure there may be more, but you know, just something that begins with a high level. If I come to this, I know when I first started and I started asking questions about agents and everybody said, just don't touch them. We'll create any agents you need. Just, you know, now I'm seeing why, but. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, I just wanted to mention, like, in case if uh, somebody needs to have write-up why we need Docker, I can do, just we need to define the place where it should go. <laughs> right, that's what, I mean, the way we're going to get to the magnum opus that I fantasize about is a whole bunch of people contributing their little piece, and mm -hmm. then we gradually put it together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. it's a great thing for crowdsourcing. Yeah. Because I don't think there's anybody yeah, alive who knows at all. Yeah, it, it's from, for example, in my Brazil experience, uh, uh, several uh, times the people uh, tell uh, tell me they don't can't uh, use anything on the Docker. It's not because the Docker. It's because the the people don't know, for example, how to use Jenkins in normal way. So mm -hmm. they try to use the Docker, they can. But the problem is not the Docker because it's, you don't know Jenkins. If, uh, if you can't uh, connect from in an agent using SHH by SHH, uh, you, you can't use Docker too. So uh, you need to uh, uh, grow up a step by step before go to Docker. Right. And I have a hunch that a lot of people are not are not using agents as well as they might because they don't understand it. if they get something like your guy, he's going back to GitLab because he knows how to use that. They get something that works and that is their hammer for all nails. So. Exactly. Yeah. There is no magic. <laughs> you need to study. Right. Good. Anything else on agents before we go to next topic? Nope. Okay, next next topic. So, Vlad, do you want to be the voice to describe what we've learned so far on the Windows Upgrade Guide? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. I would be glad. Uh, uh, I learned personally how to do blogs uh, and uh, just simple uh, by simple referring to the blog which was done before by Alex, uh, I guess, on the same topic on Windows Upgrade. Uh, but it is just uh, beneficial for me. I'm not sure was it beneficial to you as the help on it, but PR like I, I saw that issue caused PR caused. Uh, also, I learned that there is uh, uh, well, dif uh, we need to uh, differentiate between Windows installer, uh, which is kind of outside of Jenkins uh, or external in uh, upgrade and internal upgrade where we're upgrading uh, configuration and versions inside Jenkins without uh, doing installer. So there are two approaches to upgrades. Uh, one is internal and other is external, which is nice. Uh, I still found some issues which I uh, referred to days in the comment that for instance, it is through internal uh, uh, upgrade. It's not possible, for instance, to switch to any version of GDK, which we or customers may be interested in. For example, um, uh, above 9.0 uh, 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 version of Java. Uh, for instance, Java 11 is not accessible using internal upgrade. And I'm talking about upgrade from to uh, 2.235.2, uh, which is 32-bit 
uh, version uh, running on Windows. Um, uh, also very interesting issue, I noticed that before when doing this uh, uh, upgrade, before the weekend at least, I was able to get my uh, Windows installer to 235.3 running on Windows. Um, I'm talking about uh, MCI executable, but today, for instance, and I think over the weekend, I was not able to do this because of limited, uh, 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 not enough privileges to run Jenkins script. Although I uh, switched myself to administrator, uh, uh, changed uh, properties and run as administrator on my Windows box. I thought that maybe it was because I was user before, but even by switching to administrator, I'm still not able to run Jenkins script. Well, some issues I'm just sharing. Uh, also, I uh, just wanted to clarify when we're saying 2.235.4, I guess we're referring not to LTS uh, release, but to weekly build. Uh, is it correct or maybe I'm no, actually that one is LTS 2.235.4 um, so weekly weekly has been using this since um, it's 2.232 2.232 April 2020 hmm. But the first time we did it for uh, LTS was actually 2.235.3. Three, right. And this is what is referring right now, download page. Right. Uh, so now your, your permission issue is one that needs description in the upgrade guide. I think I know how to solve it, and I'll send you a comment. I'll include a, a description in the upgrade guide and a link to an article. And then we'll have you test it just to be sure it works. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. And we're talking about uh, 2.235.4, not 3? Correct. Well, so the, this is a complicated one. 2.235.3. Mm -hmm. 2.235.3 did not initially deliver the new installer. Mm -hmm. but did deliver a few days later. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had Windows infrastructure problems because in the most recent episode, Microsoft inadvertently blocked us from building by releasing a surprise change in their virus scanner, which said one of their own tools had a virus. Mm. And, and they fixed it very quickly there afterwards. It didn't take long for them to fix that, right? Lots of people told them this is a problem. They immediately fixed it, but it just happened that it blocked our ability to do a build on that, on that specific day. I guess it was not coronavirus, that is why they fixed it. it. <laughs> yes, this, this in fact was, was not a, it was, it was much, much slower to mutate than coronavirus is. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mark, I'm curious, is your solution related to the overall permissions in Jenkins or is it a Windows thing? It's a Windows thing. There's a, okay. there's a, there, and it's the nature of Windows, right? That they correctly don't grant permission to log in as a service to every account. And they ah. shouldn't, right? Because you and I as human beings should not log in as services. It, that'd be a way if somebody compromised my password and then right. has login as service permission. Now my computer is has become their bot. So mm -hmm. don't allow you to log in as a service is a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you need to log in before uh, starting or like doing anything with the service. I told it. Like, well, it's it's that there's a there's actually a setting mm -hmm. in in Windows that checks that. Now we probably ought to. Now that you mention it, Vlad. We ought to uh, need to submit a, a uh, an issue report 
that the validation check in the installer should confirm that the user has login as service permission. Because right now it's checking that the password is valid and that the user exists. Mm -hmm. There's no reason it can't also check that the user that's been provided as the service account can actually log in as a service. Mm -hmm. Vlad, you willing to take that action item? Uh, I well, if you want to take, yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I would be glad to help Mark on that. The one. item is to file the issue, not to fix it, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, and and really, it's what I would propose is don't submit the issue until you verified that the new instructions I give resolve the issue. <laughs> because the new instructions I create will be the proof that yes, in fact, that was what the problem was. And until, uh, and then, then you say, hey, we need to check for this instead of just documenting it. Yeah, sure. So I will not submit the issue before I know how to fix it. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It's related to login as service. Mm -hmm. All right. And you are talking about uh, 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 this login as service inside installer or uh, just some some stuff that needs to be done in general to assign privileges? So it's a, this is a, a you'll have to open a, a, with a Windows control panel and navigate to a specific section in the permissions uh, detail in the permissions section of the Windows Control Panel, and you have to open up a property panel, add a new user, etc. Mm -hmm. It's oh. it, it feels there's a great page that I read to to guide me on step by step which things to click in the in the Windows UI. And maybe it will may become part of administration guide for Windows folks later in case. Well, it, at least it needs to be part of the upgrade guide for sure. Mm -hmm. um, good question. Should the, should the Windows install instructions I, I haven't checked to see. Now you've now you've prompted something. Okay, Jenkins, Jenkins.io. What do the install instructions currently say? Installing Jenkins, we certainly have a big section on Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Here is our here are our instructions. <laughs> <laughs> it's and and that's that's probably reasonable, right? That's not unreasonable to say download it and run it because but this might be a good excuse for us to write instructions here which use what you wrote and what alex earl wrote in that original blog post right this this section on windows should probably include those screenshots from the installer mm -hmm. yeah and also, I was thinking about maybe, in case governor's board will approve, maybe these instructions, uh, like this part of administration, uh, related to administration services, uh, may become, uh, or may be included inside administration uh, section of our uh, documentation, because we have Jenkins administration. Yeah, that, that one I'll need to think about. I'm not sure where we currently describe um, port numbers and port access. You know, how do we tell, where do we tell people, oh, your Linux computer must allow the port that you're putting Jenkins on, whatever it is, your Windows computer, same way. I, that's a good question. There is another question then, about Windows 2, for example. Uh, usually here in Brazil, we install Jenkins on Windows Server, not a, a in our common installation. So maybe we should create some documentation. We need to know 
how to create on the Windows Server 2, for example? Um, I think it's the same. It's a good question, but I think it's yeah, the same. Yeah, I, I don't remember it's the same. Because the because it's the server installations, there is an, uh, different policies and ports and uh, ways to running services. Ah, I see. Okay. Good. It's good not question. the same. The common common user Windows. Okay. Good. Good question. Then. So, and certainly there are. We know there's one example where most most Windows server machines probably. That are running Jenkins are probably also running at a copy of Internet Inf Information Server, right? They're probably serving web pages somehow, and and that. How do you configure those two so that with Jenkins, and then there's SSL on Windows with Jenkins. Those are topics that haven't been touched yet, and certainly users would love to know how to do that. And uh, just a question, Mark. Uh, do contributors like us need access to Windows Server? Um, running a Windows Server operating system, for instance, uh, or it's not necessary? I don't think so. I I, I can I, I can start up CloudBees funds me with a with a Google Cloud platform account, and I will do so. I can do some double checking, some safety checks to confirm that the Windows Server instructions that the Windows instructions work for server as well as desktop. I've done all my checks on multiple copies of Windows 10, but it's it's not hard for me to spin up a Windows Server run some tests and then disc discard it. Mm, All right. Anything else? We've we've hit our hour. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Recording will be posted later. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.